Hello golfers, did you realize that you can use your feet and your shoes to alter not only your contact quality, but also your club path? That's what this video is about, so let's get after it. Many of you already know that I'm an avid Swing Catalyst user. Here at home, I have the pressure plate that's what we're gonna talk about at work. I have the dual motion plate, which I got the forces and all that good stuff, individual feet plus pressure. It's really, really cool. And having this technology for several years has helped me learn a lot about how your interaction with the ground affects your club delivery. Well, here it comes. You can see my feet on that display, toes, heels. Understand that that's me going to the left. So what did we see with that first golf swing? Well, we saw that I tend to hit a draw and we saw a six degree club path heading inside out. Now the first thing that I'm gonna do is go, huh, well, it's a pretty darn playable golf shot. It drew right back to the target. And the low point of the swing was four inches, 3.8 after ball contact. Now the low point of the attack angle, you may remember because I hit four degrees down on the golf ball. I, I my swing bottomed out 3.8 inches after impact. We had the club face just slightly rightly and the club path was mo right And that's the formula for hitting a draw. Not bad at all. Now, let's play around a little bit. What would happen if I were to have my pressure stay back on my back foot too long? Ooh, well, number one, I hit behind that golf ball. And I've got to tell you, if you check out that swing, this is not an unusual move that I see. In fact, I see many golfers actually spin backward. It's a pretty clever kind of deal. I don't know how they do that. I did not get any numbers, so I'm gonna try it again. And then we'll take a look at the difference. There's a very, that swing. Man, I see that at the range on a frequent basis. Oh yes, that's the fadeaway. And what happened there, my low point was right at the golf ball. My club path was still inside out because I think it's hardwired. And uh, I hit only 0.1 degree down on the golf ball. So let's take a look at the difference. In my standard issue golf swing on the left hand side, we can see the old coach get into the front foot. Now in this case, 73% to the front foot. In this case, on the right-hand side, you can see the fadeaway golf shot right there. Look at that, leaning tower of Dunnigan. And I'll tell you what, that move, gosh, that move, folks, that's gonna hurt your feelings on a golf course. So what do you do to get rid of that if that's part of what you do? The very first thing that I do to people, if they do fall backward, the old fadeaway, is I will get them feeling this in their feet. Okay, there you go. I'm picking up my left heel off the ground. <laughs> Let's try that again. Picking up my right heel, putting it down, swing back. The left foot back down, swing through. I don't know if you can hear that. I don't think this microphone's gonna pick that up, but it's, you can kind of hear that. One, two, three. One, two, three. That little rhythm helps you time it up, since this is a timing kind of organization, but it, the footwork helps you sequence it up. Isn't that cool? So, it's one, two, three. Oh look, there's the bottom of the swing back out in front, six inches out in front. Well, I'll be. That's just a fact, folks just plain how things really, really work. If I don't change anything else, that's a legit fact of golf. Isn't that nice? I have given you 
two very different swings. Interestingly, on the one on the right where I actually fell backwards, I had less pressure on my right foot on the back. So I got to 95 doing my heel lift job. And there he goes to the front foot on the left-hand side. I went a little bit to the left on this one too. Isn't that cool? But on the other side, I got to 81% in the trail foot. And by the way, see this little archy type of trace? That's really kind of cool. What happens in that archy type of trace is this. Let me just go to one recording. Okay, so there's the guy in this arc type trace. You'll see the pressure goes back to the arch of the back foot, goes a little toward the ball of the front foot first, and then starts to arc around to the heel. Okay, and I'd call that pretty standard trace. But wait, there's more. So now we know that moving onto that front shoe more is going to help me hit ball and turf contact. But check this out. Let's say that I'm one of those folks who slices all the time, comes over the top. Now the beauty of this, if I can step into my right heel, what will happen is my pocket, and this is another cue for you, I'll take my pocket and put it around behind me. And that motion is going to do something really cool. But I'm going to even go farther and go, okay, get that heel into the ground, like you're screwing the heel into the ground, or you could go pocket back, whichever works better. Then I'm going to squish the ground like I was uh, stepping on <laughs> a snake. No way, dude. I'm running. And see what happens. Okay, so heel, ball of the foot. I'm going to go squish the heel of this shoe into the ground. Back shoe into the ground, ball of the front shoe. What do you think is going to happen? No fair aiming. So I'm aiming very straight, folks. Here we go. All right. Heel, ball of the foot. Oh, baby. Whoa. I just doubled my club path. Did you see that? And I'm doing that in a rhythm. Yes, you don't have to say it out loud when you're out the range. You're going to look like an idiot. But personally, I don't care. I want you to see how I'm actually using the cues in a rhythmic sense. Time is important in this game. Fine. But folks, you say, yeah, but Dunnigan, you draw the ball every time. Well, I have a draw path every single time. I have a low point out in front every single time. I don't always have the club face. That's a story for a different time. What would happen if I reverse that? What would happen without changing my aim if I went to the ball of the right foot on the backswing and the heel of the left foot on the downswing? And we're going to have a really cool thing show up, I believe. All right, done again. See if you have any coordination. All right, ball... Heel. Heel, boy. Whoa. Did you see that? I just took my path five degrees left. And folks, I got news for you. I'm not even trying to change the path. I'm just playing with my feet. If you're trying to fix a path that's too far right, well, make sure it's not you have a super shut face grip and that your brain is shoving the path out to the right to overcome it. But you may be one of those folks that's getting the pressure in their feet wrong. And I've got a really cool thing for you. It is very, very, very common to see golfers, even when they shank the ball, begin with their weight on their heels. Okay, well, I'm not going to shank a golf ball again, Dunnigan. It's embarrassing to me. But then guess what happens? Your brain says, hey, we're out of balance. Get on your toes. That causes the shank to get worse. Just keep that in your back pocket if you ever get a case of those shank apotamuses for Christmas. Yep. Here we go. The pros actually start largely on the balls of their feet. They do a little bit of maybe toward the heel, maybe toward the toe, a little tiny bit. Okay? Maybe more with the driver. And then they always work toward the heel. 
even the guys who jump a lot actually work toward the heel. Then I want you to work this back and forth, heel, toe, right heel, left toe, more path. Right toe, left heel, more path to the left. Is that cool? That's really, really cool. We're going to have a quick peek at these, and then I'll let you go practice. All right, standard swing. Nothing to see here. Balls of the feet for sure, folks. A little toward the right heel. You can see that right heel turn on right there, right here. And a little out toward the toe first, then into the arch, and then finishing on the heel. That's standard trace. Is that the same one? Oh, no, that's the heel lift. Yeah, there you go. There's the heel lift. Lift that right heel. Slam it back down. There goes the pressure to the right foot. And now squish over toward the toe. Then get around to the heel. That's the footwork exercise. I use that so regularly in my instruction. It's unbelievable, folks. And that's going to create more of a draw path, as you can see. This one is the one where I went extra. Are you ready for this? I went very much toward the heel and I went straight out toward the ball of the foot. Now that's organizing all of my body differently and I don't even know I'm doing. I'm trying to just squish my, the ball of that shoe into the ground. I have given you this overhead view incidentally because I just wanted you to see a lot of folks have this thing in their head about sway. I'm going to give that my right hip right about there, folks. I think so. But folks, let me tell you something. See this shift? That shift is not sway. That's weight shift. And that is part of the kinetic sequence of how to accelerate that golf club through the air. Okay? This shift, you can call it sway if you want. Don't. Sway's got a negative connotation. That is absolutely necessary. Now, a big amount of sway to the right on the backswing might be troublesome. Okay, you could see that my right hip might start out toward that line, but it comes away from the line. If that right hip is significantly like an inch to two inches on this side of that line, then you might have a problem. Okay, but please, please, please allow yourself to bust right through that front line. Okay, now here we go. Whoa, we just completely reversed it. Look at these gray lines are showing the trace. Watch this kid go. Now I squish the ball, the right shoe into the ground, like I'm stepping under that right there. That's the old snake under the shoe. And now I'm gonna squish the left heel into the ground. Whoa. And look what happened. Massive change in club path. Now, by the way, even though I was back footing it a little bit, I'm still 63% in the front. It's not this one, the fadeaway golf shot where I didn't hit down on it at all. Uh, it's not the same thing as this one. Whoa, baby. Look at that guy go. Hello, golf. No, that's not the same thing. But what I would say is that because I got the path going much more left, even though I didn't shift as much in front of that line or at all, because the path was left, that helped me hit down more. And I do think that one of the reasons people swing the club so far outside in is because it is easier in that way to hit down on the golf ball, to move the low point ahead of impact. However, if they would just get your hiney moving, we'd be all set, folks. And here's, whoa, there you go. There, there. Then the club moves next. Okay? Now, this pressure shift business, I have done this repeatedly. You may have heard that this pressure should move to the front foot before the end of the backswing. Folks, it does happen in some swings but that is not necessary for all swings at all. I have a bunch of tour pros on here and maybe I'll make another video about that. So we straighten out that business, okay? Okay, so your feet can positively lead the way to better golf. 
I know it. I do it every single day with folks. I want you to do me a huge favor. I want you to play with it, but I want you to note this. When we're back, all right, don't let, don't let this move first. Get this going first, okay? It's not a turn first. I call it stepping in or stepping on something, right, or squishing the ground, whatever you want to use. And by the way, you do have two feet, so a lot of times uh, I will end up getting, this is on the, on the dual force plate system, but I'll see if this right shoe is pushing this way, like a baseball pitcher, go Phillies, baby. Baseball pitcher pushing off that rubber on the mound. Or, and, squishing over this way. You have two feet, use them both. Okay? And you can play with it. See what happens if you just goof around a little bit with it. Play around, see what happens. Just realize, I want the shift to go before you do swing the club. Doesn't have to go before you get the club all the way back, as I said. All right, folks, you got some homework to do. Get after it.